Uh, hey guys, how's it going? Thanks for joining us this morning. We, we booked like early morning panel because we thought that was a genius idea. Yeah. And now we're all suffering, crying. Well, we're going to play thrash ball now, so we Exactly. Yeah. exactly. <laughs> um, so yeah, we're, uh, we're here to talk a little bit about uh, games we have a lot of stuff to chat about. Uh, a lot about uh, versus multiplayer and some actual uh, some new stuff as well related to uh, some merchandise. So I'll just kind of go over some of the, of the things we plan on talking about. Uh, first thing is the special guests. They're the special guests. They are the special guests. Oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, we actually uh, we have a few people up here in the front row. We kind of want to highlight here right in the beginning. Uh, we also plan on talking about our Torrent trailer. I'm not sure if you guys have seen it. Mm -hmm. uh, it is freaking awesome, but we'll, we'll talk about, about that as well. I'm biased. Uh, and then we'll also talk about, of course, Gears World versus Multiplayer. Uh, what's coming for some new Gears merchandise? It's a never before seen stuff. It's the Sarah over here. It's a never before seen. And then we'll do a, a quick QA at the end. Um, so you guys can ask your questions. Well, pretty sure. like fine. Exactly. So uh, we'll just go right into the QA. That's fine. <laughs> uh, but we also do have a lot of uh, uh, cool swag prizes and things like that up here. Um, to our wonderful people that are here live with us. So, just to introduce ourselves, uh... Oh, well, see you! you did, I, I made you change it. it. <laughs> you made me change it, and now it's like out of order. You're such a rookie. Well, the first panelist is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> like, I feel like I just walk out and introduce myself to each individual person. Ah, oh, there it is. Is it any time where you're going to turn into a You gave me this. Uh, my name is Adam Fletcher, I'm director of community at the Coalition. Boo. Oh, sorry. Uh, I hate it. Boo. Boo. First one. Talking to Mike already. That's right. Uh, I'm Ryan Cleaver, and I'm the late multiplayer designer on Resort 4. Hi, I'm Sarah Butlin, I'm the director of Business Development at the Coalition. Yay, yeah, Sarah. I started it. Yeah, we did, right? We did. We did. We did. I started it. Um, right. So, I'm trying to hear. She's coming. Stop, keep going. Working, I just want to say working with Rod creates the most awkward situation. Hey, Charlie, hey, Charlie, come by yourself. <laughs> the, uh, uh, one, the first thing we want to actually show off was the, uh, the Toronto trailer before we actually jumped into special guests. Oh, man, that's the new one. Yeah, don't worry. Thanks, Rod. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I'm sure you guys have seen it. We actually premiered this uh, a couple of weeks ago. Um, we are the Walking Dead during the, during the uh, premiere for uh, the season premiere for the season. Um, so we'll take a look. Xbox right now, uh, so a little wave in the Xbox 
Xbox One reveal of hardware reveal. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Not even. <laughs> no big deal. It's Luke, but even though I know it's being Twitch streamed, because now I can say half the shit I would normally say. Because, uh, <laughs> if it's just among friends, you can say shit. But now we're being broadcast, so we can't. Um, but anyway, so it's been an amazing experience. I just want to say thank you guys to everybody. If you, you know, left it on play and walked away and let it loop over and over for us, I would have played it. Obviously, it's resonating with people a lot. I get so many tweets about it, like, uh, as a new father, or, you know, my kids, and when I was playing this, uh, you know, I was a certain age, and it just, like, the fact that, one of the things I really like about Gears of War is the fact that it's not just a space marine versus aliens game, that like, we have these moments of humanity in our game, whether it's the dog moment, or the Maria moment, or uh, these types of things, or where people can actually connect with the characters in the story, and so, I feel this is an important yeah. part of our franchise, that it's not just a space marine fighting aliens kind of game, that it actually has human elements and something to connect to, and so I'm glad that it seems that people appreciate it too. Um, all right, so you have your special guests. Yes, some special guests. Uh, so we actually have some cosplayers here right now, and I kind of want to, I actually would love if they could stand up and actually come up here to the front so they can actually display some, some awesome cosplays, so you guys could, that would be great. Okay. I'm cosplaying. So I'm gonna ask for names here for your cosplay dads, because this stuff is awesome. We we I, I, let me just tell you, like, cosplay is probably one of the coolest things ever. I, I love it to death. I love watching our fans be able to, you know, just be so attached to our characters and actually uh, uh, dress up as them and, and come to these different shows. And, and I mean, the amount of work and effort that you guys do into this stuff is crazy. So this is awesome. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh yeah, 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 actually let's go over here so you guys can be blinded by this wonderful light like I am. Yeah, that'd be great. And then, oh, shut! So, I'm gonna ask for names. You can introduce yourself, tell me who your cosplay does, and then how long it, did it take to do all this work? My name is Stephanie Rodgers. It took me about a week to make this because I was really rushed. And it took me about five months. We actually were in our living room together making them, <laughs> a lot of it. Um, five months for the first one, and then I completely redid the breastplate as well as the back piece. And that took me about a month for packs. <laughs> so, I am Ben Gearsgar, but also Dale. Um, <laughs> you've probably seen just us blasting all over the place, but we are members, some of us are members of the 26RTI cosplay group that we just was formed probably about five years ago. We have about 198 members worldwide. Um, that's the W. Multiple accounts. It's also multiple accounts. Essentially, depending on where you catch me, I'm either Coltrane. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> So, <laughs> we can also rock with Anthony, which we all know who yeah. <laughs> uh, Rip. Cosplay took about five months, but I worked with him, him real closely with Sid Grant, so he helped me out a lot with this, uh, with the fabrication, and basically once I got it, then I had to resheet the whole damn thing, but it would not fit. <laughs> so we had to make it happen, but that's what we are today, so thank you so much. Circle, circle, and stuff, and then at the same time, I'm gonna grab all your information. Circle of the Twitch. Uh, like, these guys put in so much effort. Uh, I love rewarding um, anyone that, that has this much passion, has this much passion as us for, for Gears of War. So thank you guys again. It's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So did I get kind of your transition as you're walking? See your mic's dead now. So one of the things that's come out from the community team that our team has done is these uh, cosplay guides. Uh, these were the really quick ones to get the content out there in terms for Ultimate Edition. Yes, yes, and we, we we're planning on doing uh, uh, much more detailed ones for Gears.
figures for where we're actually going to do full turnarounds and uh, grab additional commentary from the artists that we're working on. You know, the, the, the concept art and the, the character writers and everything. So, thank you. Yeah, it's going to be really good. Well, it's been good talking. I think when uh, we were talking to Stephanie about what she was doing and some of the, giving her some of the lore behind what, what was on. Because like, yes. one of the things that, that is really hmm. expressed that was interesting when we were talking about the ponytails. And if you notice, the, if you've seen the art so far, the cave has a ponytail on one side and her left side, and Raina has a ponytail on the her right side. And that's because in the outsider culture, in, in years of War IV, there's a the notion of that you wear your ponytail to indicate your availability. In the sense that if you wear it on your left, you're single or you're available. Oh. And if you wear it on your right, you're married and you're taken. Okay. So Raina uh, has a long ponytail on her right side, and even though she's lost her husband, she still wears her ponytail on her right to say that she's not available, that she's... It's not a spoiler. <laughs> uh, but that notion, and it's just something that goes into cosplay, like the, it, it, it matters. Like that's the thing that we were, the conversation we were having was that the little thing about what side you wear your ponytail on matters uh, to the characters. And so it's those sorts of things that we want to get those details so that people when they want to cosplay them, making sure they're, they're accurate. So. Cool.
And I think what we found was I mean, you ended up not satisfying either audience. It wasn't enough of a first-person shooter to get the first-person shooter audience, and we're actually moving away from the Gears That's audience and losing Gears players. And so we ended up in this really awkward and neutral zone that we didn't like. And so one of the big missions for us was really to stay true and just embrace what makes Gears Gears. And so when I stood up the coalition, probably in the first week that I was there, I talked to a lead, don't chase, and that what we're going to do is we're not going to try to change Gears of War to become something uh, to chase other people's successes. What we're going to do is we take Gears and take the things that are true and meaningful to Gears and just go really super deep on them. And so things like intimate violence, the things that are, are, are up close, that visceral feeling, your hands sweating, and, and, you know, the monsters in your face, chainsaw, and things that happen, that, that stuff we're just going to double down on. And why you see things like the knife execution. You know, that idea of using cover as a, as a way to move, like a horizontal platform. You see things like that vault kick and the slide smoothly over cover. And teamwork and flanking, that idea of, you know, in other games you can be one of 16 on a team or one of 12, and your individual performance kind of doesn't matter. You're in there to get XP. Um, you're not necessarily like, oh, I'm the, I'm the reason we won or I'm the reason we lost. You just, I'm, I'm just on there to get some XP. Whereas in Gears, you can see very clearly with four or five people on a team, if you go out early, we were watching the pro finals yesterday, and their big whole thing was like, if, if, if it goes from 4v4 to 4v3, there's an immediate assumption that the guys who lost the first guy was going to lose the round because they were now off by one, which was crazy, right? And so that feeling, though, of intensity and, and like accountability about how you play is an important part of it. It's, it's a part of a barrier for us that we're working through, too, because some people mm -hmm. are intimidated by that. But it's what makes Gears Gears, which is cool. And then weapons as characters, and the notion, like, I talk about other games having gun porn, where you have, oh, I want to change my accuracy by 1.3% by adding the red laser sight, or I want to change it by 1.2% to add a little sock. And, like, you know, Gears weapons are, like, characters into themselves. They're like a torque bow and a boom shot. There's no nuance there. It's, it's a big, in-your-face, understandable weapon that does have special abilities, and that's the kind of things we want to continue moving forward. Why do you see the drop shot as an example of that? Um, but we did want to obviously go beyond just sort of getting to parody, which we spent a shit amount of time on, to get to this, this feel like Gears of War, because we're, we changed engines. Like, it, people, I talk to people and they assume, that, oh, well, you just took Gears 3 and, and added on to it, and it's not the case at all. When you have to move from Unreal Engine 3 to Unreal Engine 4, we had to rewrite a lot of stuff from scratch. Um, we had to do crazy stuff to get to parody. And so the fact that people are coming away from playing the beta on the floor and going, wow, oh, it really feels like Gears even smoother than Gears 3. That's a huge compliment. Like, I know it doesn't sound like you're going, like, wow, you're putting on innovation. The fact that you're saying it's like, it's Gears 3 but better is a huge compliment to the team and everybody because that's exactly where our focus was. But we realized once we got to that place, we were like, what can we do different? Like, how can we innovate? And obviously, cover being hugely important to Gears, it was, hey, how do we innovative cover without breaking it, because it's very easy to break cover. Um, and so we talked about, like, well, what's, what, where's cover not necessarily working uh, where we like? And obviously, um, where that is, is in sort of this idea of, you know, people get on the opposite sides of cover from each other. Like so you get this sort of what I call the naked gun like problem, so. which is <laughs> the, like the pistols over the, the garbage can problem, um, where there's so close proximity that there should be another solution, but they tend to do these weird sort of shotguns over the cover, and it looks kind of silly. So we're like, well, okay, we have this situation. I mean, Gears 3 had a mantle kick, but people found it slow and cumbersome. It was aggressive, but you had slamming the cover first, and like, there was a beat, and then you kind of went over, and some people felt it was overpowered. It's a little clunky. Right. So, we, so what, what do we do differently? So we took a, a, a defensive version and an aggressive version. So what we call the yank and shank is, this, is the defensive one, the ability to reach over cover, grab onto somebody, and pull them onto your side. Um, and it allows you to kind of you know, it's offensive because they're coming on your side of cover. And well, what's cool about it, for, especially for multiplayer, is important because the, the campaign don't worry so much about being countered, but we needed to make sure that these types of moves work both in campaign and multiplayer. So you guys spent a lot of time getting the like, feel right for, A, this is kind of like a fight game and being able to counter that when attack. You want to make sure all the tells are there so that like, you can see somebody coming and anticipate it as opposed to it just being a counter. Right. Um, but what's cool is that at the end of this, it opens up a small window that if you're hammering on Y, you can do these cool combat knife finishing moves, and you saw a lot of that in the trailer, that, that idea. And it all has to do with like angle of attack. That depending on in which direction you attack somebody, there'll be like if you attack straight on, you're just right now in the bay, there's like a four different uh, types of stabs you can do. And then if you attack from the side, there's different stabs. And if you attack from this side, there's different stabs. And if you attack from behind, there's different stabs. And so the, the variety comes into like, not only you know there being variety on one angle of attack, there's also multiple angles. 
things, and so they play different things. And then each, you know, faction in our game, the top one being the cog, the middle being the outsiders, and the bottom being the swarm, each have their own combat knife they can use. So uh, it's an it's great just taking that, you know, intimate violence, that idea of the executions or the finishing moves, and taking and making it faster so people use them more. And it's been it's usually gratifying when you get one, so it's great. The best one is the lucky one. That's what the yeah, game the unicorns. Yeah, where you figure. slice up and then you stab it right on top of their forehead and it just gushes blood. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then the, the aggressive one is, is the vault kit, which is a, a this idea of not having, you know, when we had the mantle, oh, JD, what, you're three, three like I said, you have to slam in and then you have to sort of come, you know, punkily. Is punkily a word? I can make a word now, punkily. Um, uh, you can completely move over. Um, but now with Vault Kick, you can actually just smoothly, like, as you're approaching, you can press B and, and you're over, and you can be able to keep going over. Um, and the notion of this uh, allows you to actually accelerate. So you see that in a lot of the matches yesterday, when they, that first piece of cover coming out of the spawn, people would just like smoothly go over top and keep going around. Um, it's the same thing opens for the knife movement and also can be countered. So you can have multiple ways we're seeing too. It's not just there's the counter, but then the people that are actually yanking those people. Yeah, there's, there's, a, there's a tiny window that if you time your yank properly, you can actually count on the ball kicks or a little rock, paper, scissors thing. Yeah, it's, it's great because they're, they're actually running towards cover and then you just <laughs> keep <laughs> going. <laughs> Thanks for helping. <laughs> 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 um, so some of the weapons, you know, we, one of the things that was interesting for us is that in the past games, one, two, and three, uh, we would, you know, to come up with a new idea for a new weapon, it was easy to do because we were dealing with, um, you know, there was part of the war effort, like you're fighting the locust and, oh, there's just a new weapon because the war continues. Well, for four, it's coming after 25 years of peace. So we're like, how do we get new weapons when there's 25 years of peace? And so one of the things we talked about was, hey, well, the world is rebuilding now, it's under, you know, they're, they're rebuilding from the wars, wouldn't it be cool if you could take tools uh, and make that into the new weapons. And so we, we, we did that, and so the first one is the drop shot. Now the drop shot came about as part of like, hey, you know, when the, when the countermeasure goes off at the end of Gears of War 3, it killed all the locusts. And we actually had two weapons, the ink grenades and the digger that were locust creatures, not just weapons, and they go away too. And so everybody loved the digger, at least on, on our side. <laughs> and it's not the digger. Um, and but that idea of like having this kind of unique weapon that kind of invalidated the cover because if you go underneath it, it was really cool and we lose that. And so we're like, what? How can we have a weapon that invalidated the cover but still be our fiction? And, and be skillful. And be skillful. And so the drop shot is this weapon that shoots out this drill bit with a bomb on it, essentially for mining. It's a tool to fictionalize it. It's a mining tool. Very efficient. Yeah, exactly. Well, you know, sarin miners are not a, 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 a don't have a level of expand. Um, they're all car mines. It's the car mine mining company. Yeah, I have to take a note. That's genius. I mean, mining. Yes. Um, <laughs> uh, but this idea of, so what you allows you to go to over power instead of under power. And so when you shoot it, you'll see this little red laser go out that kind of as an indicator of where it will land. And when you let go of the trigger, it'll actually drill down. And what you saw in the trailer is what happens with a headshot. Is that if you go next, you know, if lands next to somebody, it blows up like a grenade away. But if you land it on the top of their head, it actually takes their head and drills into the middle of their body, rumbles for a while, and then blows out from the center. Which is nice. so, uh, <laughs> and then we wanted we wanted a new heavy, you know, much like the turrets, vultures, and those sorts of things. And the buzz kill uh, came around with this idea of like, what if we had like one of those road construction saws, but somebody had rigged it to actually shoot the blades rather than just spin them. Um, and so the best we saw there, the best call, the best call will actually ricochet in the environment around them. And so we'll take out people, and you can actually get them behind them, hit the cover, and have it bounce back and take them out. And it can also kind of mess you up, you know, pay attention to the ricochet. Yeah. yeah. So, um, but if you're good at the pool, you'll be good at the bus <laughs> kill. Remember, ankle incidents equal ankle obedience. Anyway, so that's it. So, but it was really a fun challenge to kind of think about things that weren't based on a war. I was just like, let's just screw with things that exist in a way like let's go like that. That saw essentially exists, right? But just making it lethal, <laughs> which is cool. All right, so that's the first one, like how do we stay true while innovating? The second one is really just the best versus for everyone. Please interrupt me, I'm going to use this speech, so it's hard for me to stop talking. Um, <laughs> But the thing for us was really about looking at, you know, in the past, when you look at one, two, and three, as we talked about, I've talked about a lot, and you probably heard, is this notion that 
you know, we were really focused at Epic on the bottom two of these. Like we look at the new and the social. We're always trying to find this. You know, if you think about it as a as a funnel of how people move through, they become in new and they work their way up through social, through competitive, and they ultimately become a professional. We were really focused on the new and social. We were always talking about how do we broaden that funnel and make it wider at the bottom. And we kind of let the top take care of itself. We never really helped the competitive scene. We didn't really do anything in esports. I mean, we've been in esports since 2006 and MLG and all this stuff. So keep me you know, like I say, life will find a way. Like you know, esports will find a way. Uh, people will play competitively, you know, if it's a good game. And, and so that's one of those things where we sort of always were designing for the bottom. And so when we came to Gears 4, we really talked about like. Instead of just focusing on the bottom, how about we focus and actually make sure we have something for everyone and focus on all four slices in here and not have, you know, how do we make it necessarily the same thing? Like, I think that's something we, we've heard before about accessibility and, you know, something for everybody. And it, it always boils down to the most common denominator, and that's not the approach we took. Right. We were like, okay, we have all of these different four types of customers. We want to make sure that we make something for each one of these different types, right? Not, not just to sort of boil it down and make sure it's one thing for, for each one, like for both. Right, so in some examples of that, um, so you want to talk about it? Right, so now it's a big exception. Well, this <laughs> one is class there. Wait, Silva? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I'm yeah, freaking wrong. Um, so, gold, if I could be uh, honest. We wanted to bring uh, visible skill ranks to, to Gears of War. This is not, like, in the beta right now, uh, we put the rankings on everything, and it's like, just because it's a, it's a beta, we're trying to test out all the systems. And it updates overnight. It updates every night right now, and we're still looking at that in terms of Wake up, but there's a kid waiting. Exactly. So if you want to check your new rank, go out at midnight or whatever. <laughs> uh, not that we want you to keep playing after midnight, but every part of it. Uh, so the idea here is that uh, we wanted to showcase the fact that we're doing skill-based matchmaking behind the scenes, as well as communicate to people. People have been really asking for, how do I know in Gears of War that I'm better than this, my friend or better than other people online? And it hasn't historically had this. So we, we created this, you know, very straightforward bronze silver gold. Uh, Onyx and, and Diamond, and the first four ranks have, have tiers, like there's Bronze 1, 2, 3, Soul 1, 2, 3, Gold 1, 2, 3, etc. Et wow, I did what? not turn off that. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and now what you can do when you're playing is you can, you can see where you are relative to the other people at the end of the match, and know like, oh, okay, like I was, I was Bronze and he was, he was Gold, that's why I lost for a while, like beating somebody that's a Gold, but in Bronze is an amazing accomplishment. And, and it matters who you play, like, People that are familiar, familiar with ELO type systems, when you beat somebody that's not as good as you are, it doesn't count for as much as when you beat somebody that's better than you are. So, under the hood, it's, it's not exactly an ELO system, it's, it's more of a true skill derivative, but um, it really matters who you're playing against. And, and in beta, everybody's playing against everybody, and, and for launch, we're still looking at how we're going to set up our playlists, but we will be having some that are um, unranked and, and social, and then the, the ranking will be, be separate. So, you don't have to play ranked if you don't want to. But for the people that do, we're going to have these divisions. Cool. Well, I, I mean, the thing for me of getting the, the tier-based skill-based matchmaking and being really visible and you know, focusing more on that is this idea that I like to talk about is, is thinking about gears of war like, bas like basketball. Where you're seeing basketball, it's a ball of part of two nets. The, the game itself doesn't change. What changes is the level of competition. And so if you were to take somebody who enjoys, like me, like if you enjoy playing in that post-gym beer play and beer league, and then you say, okay, take that player who loves basketball. This is a favorite thing to do after work every night. And you go, okay, I'm going to put you down on an NBA court, and I'm going to play against professionals, and he gets smashed in the face, and he gets dumped on and all this stuff. And he now hates basketball. And, and nothing's changed. It's a ball in the court of two nets. What's changed is the level of competition. And so what the, the, the visible skill ranks in our matchmaking have to do is actually allow for that separation so that the beer league players can play with the beer league players and the NBA professionals can play with the NBA professionals. And you can find like, the, the level of competition that's best suited for you so you can have the best experience. Because at the end of the day, the sport, or, or the basketball, the game doesn't change. It's just who you can play against. Right? And if you just want to hang out and play with your friends, we're going to make that possible. Um, all right, so one of the things we did look at in terms of that new player, uh, and I talked about a little bit of the intimidation factor, is a lot of people sometimes go in, and I was one of my worries with the beta actually, like, oh, this Gears of War 4 thing's coming along, I'd really like to try it out. Oh, hey, I got shot in the face five times, I don't think this is really me. <laughs> uh, so one of the things I really wanted to make sure we had was that it was, that we, was a way, a safe place to go play. And so we've had bots in the past, but they've really been filler. They've been like, oh, it's three versus three, so let's put two bots on each team to make it even. But uh, this idea of having, hey, let's go match make to a human only team. So we can have five humans play against an all bot team. And so that way you can play socially, you can make friends, you can 
can learn new skills and new techniques from other human players. Um, and you just have a good time but knowing you're only playing against the uh, bots. Right? And so that Oscar it allows for sort of a safe place to go learn and discover. Um, and what's cool is that when we move from Unreal Engine 3 to Unreal Engine 4, <clears throat> the programming language changed. So Unreal Script went away. And Unreal Script was the way that AI was implemented in Unreal Engine 3. So <clears throat> whether in multiplayer or in the campaign, all of the logic behind the, the, the enemies went away, or even in the squads went away. So we had to rewrite it. And so that became an opportunity where now the multiplayer bots, like in the past when you played a multiplayer bot, it was the same personality, the same logic was in all five guys. So when you play against bots in, say, Gears 3, you were playing against five individuals. Not, they had no idea of what a team was, they didn't have any idea of what roles, they just had, they all were running the same logic. And so they're all doing essentially the same thing. Yeah, and I think people have noticed this because uh, Oscar seems to be a little. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Oscar is close. Got it. Yeah. Noted. Uh, <laughs> um, so, but now, like, the bots have personality and they have uh, roles. And so some are aggressive and some are more passive, some are snipe and some are flank. And so you get the sense that you're fighting a team, not just a group of five individuals. So, what became sort of like, oh crap, we have much work to do because we have no AI anymore, uh, became a huge opportunity for us to kind of improve it and build upon it. Um, and then once you're in there, you can actually, we'll bring out some of the hardcore just to beta, just because we wanted to have a tap, you know, run something that was challenging. But when you get the final game, you'll be able to pick whether I want to play this mode with, or with casual, normal, hardcore. I'm saying this, so you can actually work your way up. You can start with five people playing casual, and then once you get to the point where you're dominating the insane bots, you can go like, either I want to go in and play now online against human opponents, or I can stay in this world because one of the things we're going to do is recognize that some people never want to leave this space. It's like, we, you, you give me the staff. Yeah, yeah, I mean, we like, uh, uh, we found that a lot of multiplayer gamers, like, in the Premier League have a strong demand to play uh, co op with their friends. So, like, roughly about 50% of gamers will at least dabble in offline, and about 25% of them want to play all the time offline, which is really inspiring for us. So, that's what we're going to love that. Like, if, you, if you want to play just with human teammates against bots all the time, you'll still get people who are just to learn stuff, you'll be able to grind in that, in that way, too. So, you don't have to go and get chucked in the face if that's not the to. Um, so, <clears throat> one of our new mo modes that was in the beta, uh, dodgeball, is again it's sort of focused on social play. Yeah, but it's also like the most epic gears clutch mode ever. Like seriously, like getting down to five on one and then you have to kill. Like so, for the people who don't know what's dodgeball, uh, you, you make a kill and one of your teammates comes back. But uh, uh, um, what happens is is that when one like you know, start five on five, one life each team. Uh, you make some kills, somebody will die, but then they'll be able to respawn you. And then when you make a kill, one of your teammates comes back. And then this means that you start at a 5 and 5, and then you will the other team down to sort of a 1 versus 5. And somebody on that team will make a kill, it'll be 2 versus 4, and then 3 versus 3. And there'll be these giant swings back, like, like both ways. And so you, you know, it feels really intense and hardcore, but then you're just waiting to get back into the game. And it actually sort of softens the, 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 the really ultra hardcore of execution. And it's, it's definitely like more skilled sort of are a different kind of game than TDM, sort of a very an interesting hybrid of the two. Yeah, it plays up. I mean, what makes gears great is the clutch moments that, that, you know, that come back, you know, come from behind, and this really enables that by having that back and forth, which is really exciting. Um, and then the competitive mode we debuted yesterday. Escalation. Yeah, so you want to talk about that? Uh, yeah. So, um, <laughs> so this is like this is our, our new big uh, esports mode that we uh, we it's not just esports actually. We see it as the competitive mode inside the game. So it isn't just that for the pro players. We think that anybody that sees gears as a competitive game should be. Definitely taking a look at this mode. Uh, it's it's a it's a classic domination style mode with three rings, and you, the more rings you get, the more points you get, and the more points like it takes about two to ten points to win the match. The twist is, is that if you get all three rings at the same time, you win. And we could have stopped there, but we were like we looked at other esports games. We're like, well, how do we take this and grow the meta game out? And uh, we drew inspirations from things like MOBAs, where we looked at the lethality of the game sort of increasing over time. And uh, we said, how can we do that with Gears while still making it feel like Gears and not making it a new game? So uh, we came up with the uh, with, with two like with two ideas that, that achieved the same goal, but like we're we're very Gears in. And one was power weapons. Because power weapons on the map, let's let the like players place them themselves. So after every round, like it starts empty, and then the players will place one weapon per round, thus escalating the, the action. Clever. Yes. Clever. Yes. Clever. So. 
And then also the respawn timers go up. So the beginning is 10 seconds, and then the next few seconds every round. So, so wait, the respawn timers escalate as well, I guess. They uh -huh. <laughs> So, one more. Okay. <laughs> I'm waiting to go. Uh, so then, uh, uh, over, over time, um, uh, the lethality is going up, and that means that every life matters more and more and more and more. So it starts out as, as, a, as a, a faster respawning, a little more, uh, like, lots of blood everywhere, and then by you know, round six or so, everything is, is, is very tactical, and, and everyone's like, every life matters a lot, so, you know, people vote, like, the, the weight shifts from objective to, to killing, and, and then at, at, between round six and seven, we have a halftime, and that kind of resets everything, all, everything off the board, like, comes off the board, all the power weapons go away, and all the respawn timers go back, and we sort of have a second half, and if the game goes like it did yesterday, and goes all the way to 12, 13 rounds, yeah, we get a 13th tie-breaking round with 22-second respawn timers where the lethality is, is super high, so, um, we, we, we tried to create something that had a, a, a long run to it that could be viewed as like a, a, like a sporting event, sort of run about 30 minutes, as well as have the, the depth uh, of metagame and of, of competitive play that we see in, in other titles, while still making the core visual combat really shine. Yeah. So I think that was something that you think. Yeah, we'll be putting footage of that matchup. Yep, yeah, we'll have footage uh, probably later this week. It's an amazing matchup. So. Um, okay, so one of the things about you know being part of esports, you know, we talked about it, like, how do we make Gears of War more watchable? Like we felt like you know Gears of War has a head start with third person shooter. We have a camera that helps it be more watchable. Oh look, yeah, Locus. Yeah, and then it's also looks like it. But then, um, so what do you want to talk about like what the thought process was in, in terms of you know, spectators? Sure. I mean, we we really it's started the game what like, like Gears does successfully, which is that intimate player cam. We watched a lot of casters. Talked to a lot of casters. We had played for them in the office for a while. And we, we picked their brains a lot to see what they did. And we wanted to make sure we didn't lose that, that intimacy feel, but we wanted to give both the information that people needed to tell, to understand the situation, but, but also the cameras that help people understand what's going on around the immediate, immediate uh, action. So we have the ability now for casters to sort of have different layers of cameras that come out that give them control, mm -hmm. like the, the follow cam that can orbit around players. Ghost can fly a lot more like sort of an RTS or, no. or a, a strategy Foundation. Game. And this gives Foundation. people That's a lot more map. control. And then we also let them plug a keyboard in and use guy. keyboard shortcuts to jump to all the different players. Uh, oh, yeah. The menu you're you can right. see on screen gives all the health indication, all the weapons. <laughs> and as you're cycling through, it, it won't jump from player to player to player like it, it did before with that. That guy's name is so really nice. So that means that you can select the players without the audience having to watch you jump through like four people to get to the the action is. And then uh, on top of that, we came with this little twist, which is uh, you can pull the, the right bumper and, and target who you want to look at and then jump to them. We call this jump counter, obviously. That's, that's how we do it. You were, we're it's very good. Yes. You should take a baby mean that's a professional <laughs> thing. Yeah. Um, so uh, when you, what, what this lets you do is bounce back and forth in the action. So you can see something, oh, look what's going on over there. I can use x ray mode. See people running around, be like, oh, I want to see what's going on over there. I target them and jump to it, and there's a cool sort of zip, zip you know, jump camera again. Uh, so, so that uh, uh, you can really quickly navigate the, the battlefield, and it, it allows the, the caster to, to really tell what's going on overall, as opposed to just what's in that moment, but still, whatever they want, they can get back in there right over to the shoulder of the player to get all that distraction. Okay, so I'm gonna pick up the pace because I'm gonna make sure Sarah gets all of her merchandise stuff, because this is probably why people are actually here. <laughs> um, so the last goal for us was really about maximizing engagement, that idea that you start a relationship with, with players and that how do you continue that engagement and that, that relationship longer post-release. And so one of the things obviously is esports, we've talked a lot about it, it's one of those things that with Ultimate Edition, I'd like to say we started crawling with Gears in, in terms of esports and, and with Gears 4, we we hope to be considered walking. Uh, and then post release beyond October 11th, we would be, you know, hopefully getting to a place where we're running. Um, and it's just something that we feel is an important part of that engagement. Uh, and it, so far, it's been uh, like if, if yesterday is any indication, it's, it's going really well. So we're excited about that. Um, so one of the things we want to do, like in the past, Gears 3 had you know weapon skins and character skins, uh, and it was something that we felt like was a new, new, obviously the fans were, you guys were way into it because they did really well. People 
I had a lot of character skins, a lot of weapon skins. And so we wanted to bring that back. But we felt like, you know, obviously what's going on in the industry right now is this idea of cards and the idea of if you're going to collect something, it kind of makes sense to understand and collect cards. And so that's something that we're bringing into Gears of War 4. And what you're seeing below, or above, uh, in your case, uh, is the beta reward. So if you get to level 20, uh, which we based on 20 hours, 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 four and a half hours, right? So if you play about four and a half hours of the beta, you'll okay, be able to unlock uh, a character skin for Kate called Vintage Kate. So it's where her armor goes copper with the, like, the copper patina, and she has the yeah, like teal it. accessories. Um, and then we have the, the Vintage Lancer, which is a Copper Lancer and Copper Snub, which is new for us because in Gears of War 4, instead of just having the rifles be skinnable, uh, we'll have up to 12 weapons that can be skinnable. So you'll have your own, you can have your own skin boot shot, your own skin drop shot, those oh. sorts of things pistols. So when you pick it up, you'll change the color yes. or whatever kind of thing you want. And what's cool, we're also bringing weapon skins into campaign. So if you love your Tiger Strike Lancer, you can play the story mode with the Tiger Strike Lancer. That's, your yes. that's really cool. Um, uh, and then we have this new thing called emblems where it gives you good titles or like you master so your own or your domain was like you'd have that title to tell people what you do on the weekends now. Um, uh, <laughs> but now we have uh, emblems which are uh, the you know be able to put behind your name in the lobby and it's part of that again to express your character and those sorts of things. So as much as we'll have weapon skins and character skins, we'll basically have lobby skins, emblems in a way. Yes, it's a way to master it. It's a name. <laughs> um, I but those are all this idea for me. So I, I, I think they did because I'm the only one I made a video about this. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. so, yeah. so we have those are the customization cards, but we also have these consumable cards called bounties that if you played in the beta you've seen, which is like, sort of like, oh, I'm going to put this card, and if I complete what's on the bounty, then I'll earn extra experience, and you know, those sorts of things. What's nice is they're not bets, they're not like, I bet I can do it this time. You play it, and it stays there until you complete it. So it's just something that you can play, but you can get more of these when you get cards that you can then continue to boost your experience game. Um, and of course, you've got to have a gun crate. So all the cards come in crates, uh, and essentially every mode in the game that uh, Gears 4 has or earned credits, you may change that name, uh, but right now we're just calling internal currency within the game credits. Uh, you'll be able to get crates with credits, and everything in the game is earnable through play. So the only exception to that is the promotional items, like the beta example. Those beta rewards I showed you, you can't, you won't be able to earn the beta rewards because the way you earn them is being part of the promotion, or if there's a retail promotion, those sorts of things. But everything else is earnable through play. And everything that you get for versus is going to be just customization and personalization. It doesn't affect the gameplay in any way. So there's no buy or man or do whatever else, right? But that being said, I'm a 47-year-old, you know, father with a, a demanding job, and so my ability to grind out a bunch of credits to get you know, the level of customization I want is harder for me. So, for the for there will be an opportunity to use real money to expedite that experience. So, you know, Ryan, uh, I'll be a new baby, so you can't really play that much either. Uh, Adam, who has no life, he can he can play a lot. Well, he's not really, but he can play a lot. I can play a beat. Uh, yeah, it's not hard if you have the beat. So, Adam can grind away, but I can. You know, Adam Arms, you know, by playing, I'm going to buy and things and try to be able to keep my cool, get my vintage characters and other stuff, right? Awesome. Yeah. Um, anyway, so we're going to have like tiers of crates, we like a lot of consumables and, and versus a lot of um, durables. I like this. Um, and the obviously thing will have rarities and things like, you know, my things will be legendary, the common, that kind of stuff. What do you expect from a card system? Um, and again, it can be applied to all modes in the game. Um, one of the new things we're doing is, is having this idea of curating maps. So in oh. the past, we have DLC, which are map packs <laughs> that, that is created in the labs that has an office. It's yes. in our audience and limited our pool of players because as soon as we put out a map pack, and you really want to do it quickly, like it shows that you should be releasing a map pack within 30 days of release. And what that means is that like, less than a month after you've released, you've now split your audience in half to the haves and the have-nots. And you're going, oh, that person bought the pack, that person did. And so we're going to be making, you know, we're going to have 10 maps in the box. But every map we release as DLC is going to be free. Yeah, and what you'll see in Gears 4, because of the competitive 
being focused on things like competitive play and escalation and not sort of things we need to make them symmetrical. Um, the, I guess symmetrical maps may not be, uh, you know, we need to see some touch ups and some work to make them, as, you know, check is my favorite. Check up every background around what we're talking. Um, <laughs> uh, but those sorts of things, uh, you know, we, we're bringing those back. So we're we putting in this map for public play. Um, but in, we, one of the things we were concerned with is, what, okay, let's say we put out two maps a month for the first year, and now we have 24 maps out there, plus the 10 maps in the box. Now we have 34 maps. Like, as a new player coming into it, say, the next Christmas, I have to face 34 maps, and how do I learn the routes, and how do I learn the weapon placements, and how do I learn the strategies on 34 maps? It's too much. And so we're taking this curated map idea of, as we bring in new maps, we'll pull old maps out, or maps that maybe are not performing as well, or not as liked, or need to be worked on, or what have you, so that we'll only keep about, you know, we haven't found a sweet spot yet, but like, like 12 to 14. Yeah, we'll be really looking at how players are performing, if there's ones in there that we think they're, you know, what we want them to be, we may, you know, bring them back there and really improve. Yeah, and so uh, we, if you've been following me on Twitter, you, you've heard my team making fun of me about pumpkin ravioli. Um, and because the reason they make fun of me about pumpkin ravioli is that's my example for this. Is like, think of it as a seasonal menu at a restaurant. You go into a restaurant, they have a seasonal menu, the fall menu, and shut up. And it's only the eighth time you've heard this, uh, this one. Uh, so, but it's just that idea of like, hey, there's pumpkin ravioli on the menu because it's the fall menu, and I love pumpkin ravioli, and when I go in, I have it every week. And then, oh, the season's changing, we're changing our menu, and I go, whoa, 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 whoa wait, what's going on? Oh, we're replacing pumpkin ravioli with citrus salad. And they're like, well, screw your citrus salad. I want pumpkin ravioli. And so the way that I get pumpkin ravioli is I'm able to pay for pumpkin ravioli, and I can order it whenever the hell I want. And that's what we're doing with this, is that essentially, if a map is coming out of rotation for a free public play, you can buy the, the map to play privately. So checkouts are rotating out, I can pay it, get checkout and own it, uh, and then I can play privately on dedicated servers with my friends. Um, and what's great is that we only have the host has to own it. So that even though you're hosting 10 people, only the one person, because we're assuming the person who wants to buy the map loves the map. Like, I love checkout, I'll pay for checkout, but I don't have to assume my nine friends also love it. I want to force them to go buy it even if they don't like it, just because I want to play with them. So only the person who loves it and the host who wants to have his friends on it has to buy it. So that way we have free public play, there's no have and have nots, and then you have that sort of private play, like, oh, I love that map, I don't want it to rotate out. I don't want it to go to the Disney vault, is another, you know, or, you know, the way that Netflix works. I mean, you get this. Yeah. Um, all right. So you have a gift for beta players. Uh, sure. Yeah. So uh, a lot of people have been playing over the, uh, the beta over the weekend. You probably noticed the, the dodgeball symbol as it comes up. Do you mention Maybe you don't. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe this is our for dodgeball. Do you do? Do it something that's on. Okay. It is something that's on. All right. Um, so uh, what we're doing is uh, we're actually giving away a free avatar item to everyone who plays the beta. It's uh, the dodgeball shirt on there. It's actually one of our first years for avatar items. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> yeah, we actually have the t-shirt. Oh yeah, we do have the t-shirt, yeah, yeah. So, uh, everyone ends up getting a free dodgeball avatar so, item the beta. Yeah, so hey, you use tomorrow, avatar Monday, uh, it's like the beta is launched for it's like everybody. Anybody who has a gold account can go and download it and play it. And so there's no level restriction. We just, you just have to play. So just get on there and play one match if you want. They just have to download it and actually play a match, uh, and then uh, you'll get a uh, dodgeball avatar shirt. Yeah. And they'll be delivered at a to be determined date. Because we're so good at sending codes. <laughs> yeah. Ah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, uh, we, speaking of avatar items, we actually do have new avatar items hitting tomorrow. Okay, so you get, like, a you can write a format or a corpse or something like that. You could write a burn right there. Attack you or... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, eat your avatar and let friends. <laughs> oh, dude, hammer um, One thing we did want to say is, uh, oh. you know, over the past week with Early Access and everyone who's uh, played Ultimate Edition, we just wanted to thank everyone for their feedback, all the fans who chimed in over Twitter or forums. Um, we also do have a um, another new way of being able to, to provide feedback over to us that we launched last week. Um, so we, we highly encourage everyone to jump into the forums and actually to sign up for our new program, which is the Gears Feedback Program. Uh, anyone can sign up. Uh, you just have to go to the URL right there. Um, uh, so we have the craziest URLs ever. Uh, and then you can, you can sign up. We plan on sending out surveys out to people. Um, and uh, eventually we plan on uh, actually rewarding people for, for kind of like helping us out, especially when, once we get into Gears 4. Cool. Yay, Sarah! Okay, so real quick, one of the things I just want to give a big 
when we went through the transition, like when we were at Epic in Year 3, we were kind of got into stride and we had a bunch of partners we were working with on merchandise and those t-shirts or action figures or books or posters, like all the stuff. We were flip-flops and pajama cool. bottoms and all that stuff was going on. Um, he liked one of my tweets. We did pajama bottoms, by the way, sorry. Um, and so, but, you know, but in the lull between the three years, essentially, when sort of Gears of War went dark, those sort of the partnerships ended. And so one of the things that Sarah's been doing as the, as the Director of Business Development, she's been re-engaging with, with partners to create new merchandise and to get that merchandise chain and get it all up and running again. And so you're starting to see that. And so I want Sarah to talk a little bit about what she's doing and, and announce uh, for the first time some of the new merchandise that's coming Thank in for Gears of War. Yeah, I'm really excited about it. Um, and we're building it for the fans. Um, coming into Gears, I was rushed to it um, when it came to the coalition. And we did a bunch of research to really understand um, what was important to the fans. Uh, we, we considered what were three different cities and small focus groups. And really understood what's important to you. And I love these pictures that shows you the passion that our fans have. I think that's the most dedicated fans. And we really want to deliver our merchandise program um, that salutes you. So. Well, the first thing we're doing is we've launched an e-store. We get a lot of questions as where can I get Gears merchandise, um, and this is where you can get it. Um, we'll also be in a number of retailers. Right now we're in Hot Topic, uh, Spencer Gifts, Walmart, um, and we're expanding our retail programs. Um, but if you're looking for stuff today, the easiest way to find it is to head to our store. Um, we're developing really authentic, premium products. Um, and we're very excited about the, the products that we have coming. We started off focusing on the franchise, really iconic items. So you'll see a lot of the Crimson Omen, the Mancer. Um, but as we go forward, um, we're going to expand those products uh, with Gears 4 merchandise and eSports as well. There's a beer growl around that's it. Here, girl, get the girl. <laughs> um, so just to, just to bring back up the dodgeball shirt thing, um, actually, we actually have a physical dodgeball shirt launching in the e-store tomorrow. Uh, and anyone who does buy that also gets the avatar item, so you can like, buy it for your mom. <laughs> she, can, she, can, she, can, she can wear that around when she goes grocery shopping. It's pretty great. Yeah, yeah, we just, so. I'm going to move forward. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever I'm excited. Cool. And we're just getting a glimpse into uh, this new program. We have a Wave 1 coming in September. Um, we're doing both Final Pops and Mystery Minis. Um, and we have a whole slew of characters to be announced. So, okay. Play the video? There you go. Where are you getting that? Godfather says JT. Thank <laughs> you. 
Um, this is a really special one for us. Triforce has been an amazing partner to Gears of War since the beginning, and uh, they actually have worked on some concept art. Yeah, they're part of the team working on the concept art for the game. Yeah, so they really have integrated with our team. Um, they're going to continue to deliver some premium statues and replicas, um, and today we're announcing their first Gears of War product. So this was the inspiration for that. That's bad. Um, and so this was a piece of badass kind of art that was done by James Hawkins of, uh, at the time when he worked for Epic. It's like Batman. And we were really inspired by this piece. It felt really, really cool. And we really wanted to have that bike in our game. And so we went and uh, and so that's what you're seeing in the, the piece that uh, Trifor's put together. So if you're looking for that, oh, what's the big statue I want of Gears of War 4? Uh, much like the mark is uh, taking a knee one for Gears 3. Uh, you just saw it. So there you go. Uh, our first big one. Yeah. Um, we have great little time, so if you want to, I don't know if there's any time for any Q&A. There's one minute left, so that's, wow. that's, what's the most uh, burning question? The horde. Horde, horde mode. mode. <laughs> 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 I, I want my money back. <laughs> Where's the hammer? Where's the hammer gone? Uh, the hammer gone, well, I mean, there's fictional stuff there, right? So we have to deal with that, so. Getting ready to time sign. So uh, obviously we're a small enough group that uh, we can mosey out into the other side. We have to leave the room or whatever, and uh, we can chat and hang out or whatever. We also do have a lot of extra stuff to give away. So feel free to chat. Didn't get any line coming. Is there a medium? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, anyway, thanks for coming. I realize it's really boring and missing work. Thanks for coming. Don't let her. Oh. Oh shoot! It's about move team. Are you kidding me? Everywhere I went, this guy was next to me.